Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of TV TV Workshop. How are you? Hey, Dave. What's going on, man? Not much. How are you, man? Uh, doing good. Workshop here. How's everything down there? Doing good down here, man. Staying busy. Actually, really? we're getting ready for another hurricane season. It's already yeah. that time of year, man. Hey, that's what we're doing the show today, actually. Know. You yeah. know, so so what are we doing today, Dave? Tell us. Yeah, we're talking about battery backups. And, uh, you know, this is something for me, it's living down here and along the Gulf South and um, power outages, uh, surges. Uh, we, we see it a lot. And it's something that's just really critical in, in owning a reef tank. And I really believe no matter where you are, though, in the country, you really should consider making the investment and having a, some type of a battery backup, something to back up to have power to at least provide a little current, some mm -hmm. oxygen to your aquarium, because things can go downhill fast, man, as soon as that power goes out. Yeah, it so, does. So nobody's immune from it. I don't care what part of the country you're in. Exactly. You experience mm -hmm. uh, something to do with power at some point. <laughs> At some point, yeah, we're we're a little bit luckier here in Chicago, and we don't get that much that many power outages. At least here in the city, we do get them in the suburbs. But yeah, even even myself, I'm not immune to that. And actually, uh, you know, before we move on, though, I you know, because I I want to say hello to everybody here. We we have some amazing people coming over to visit us. I have Mark Kennery, Wendy, Dustin, Joseph Hunt. Um, uh, Ricardo, Ricky, little Ricky's here too, you know, uh, Sunny Gold is here. So thank you so much for visiting us. Uh, we're streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. And we do this almost every other every other week. We cover it, we pick a topic and we try to help you out by describing what the what the equipment that we use and how to use it with the Hydros controller. So um, um, it's easy. We try to keep it simple, and we try to, to share as much information as we can from Dave, from Dave and my experience over the years. Yes. So, Dave, you know, like you said, talking about the weather, and uh, I actually had a, a a power outage last week. Uh -oh. Now, mine was not on schedule. It was not was not you know unpredicted. It was it was actually the the Comet company, my 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 electrical company did send me an email and then a voicemail telling me that the power is going to be out. And while the power was out, I was able to record this little video here for, you, for everybody to watch. Hey everyone, this is Carlos. And today, actually, I had the misfortune of losing power. My electrical company sent us a voicemail this morning that the power is going to be out from 4 o'clock until 9 o'clock p.m. And at 5 o'clock p.m., I got disconnected. So um, uh, right now everything is completely off and it's awfully quiet in this house, which is usually not that case with the tank running and the sump and all the things running around. But right now it's awfully quiet and all you can hear is a beeping. And that is from the backup battery powers, uh, the UPC powers or the UPS power supplies that are um, to keep my computers, uh, at least give me the time to shut, off every, shut everything off and uh, save my work there's the beep. Also, there's a beep because I actually have my router and my internet modem um, on a backup power and that I do so that the Wi-Fi stays on even during a power outage. Now, I knew about this power outage and uh, I was able to grab my Wave engine and connect it to my handy dandy IceCap battery and uh, pretty much plug it. I configured the, the Wave engine to low power mode, and I currently have four pumps uh, running on the tank during regular time, but right now it's only running one pump. So on low power mode, I can actually specify which pump runs or how many pumps to run and at what speed to run it. So out of the four pumps, I decided to run my Octopulse 4 pump at 30%. I'm just looking for something to keep the water moving and not to get it stagnant so that the oxygen keeps moving around instead of just still water which is not good for the corals and not good for the fish i don't need to run my return pump i don't need to run every single one of my flow pumps i just need one pump that runs that that can move the water uh barely but enough to move the water and keep everything um uh, 
oxygen oxygenated. Um, so as you can see, I plugged in the wave engine to my backup battery, and you can see now the wave engine is flashing yellow, which means that the battery, the, the wave engine is in backup mode, and the wave engine will continue to run for as long as it power, as long as the battery has enough power to supply to the wave engine based on the demand of the pump. So that back that that outage was about an hour and a half. It oh, lasted wow. about it lasted about an hour and a half. And you know, I I was lucky. I didn't have to worry about the wave engine. I didn't have to worry about it. The the octopulse four worked worked perfectly. Kept moving water. I didn't need to you know as they say I don't need to create waves. I didn't need to whip the corals back and forth. All I needed to do was move that water so it's not stagnant because stagnant water loses oxygen very quickly so that was it luckily i was an hour and a half so i didn't have to worry about a temperature drop um uh, you know anything uh, you know if it gets to a few hours then obviously you you start to have to consider not only flow but you're also starting to consider temperature as well so Carlos, but, your setup you're using a ups or a battery backup and maybe you can tell us the difference with that well, so I have a battery, I have both. I have a battery backup and a UPS. Most people think that, you know, the battery backup and the UPS are the same thing, and there's major differences. So a battery backup is a small, kind of like here you can see, it's a yep. small box that will automatically, um, uh, the plugs into my devices, or I, devi I plug my devices into it, and it, uh, and it, gives me power during, you know, electrical outages. Once a surge, you know, or an outage occurs, the battery backup goes into an immediate uh, power, uh, low power mode and turns on the pumps. Um, once the, po I mean, once the power flickers off, the battery backup just starts and it comes in and kicks right in. Um, and the amount of the amount of time that the po that the pump will last or will run it depends on the depends on how bad how the battery is what you know how how charged is the battery how many times the battery has been discharged and obviously the amount of power that the pump is drawing you know so yes. but most backup batteries are 12 volts because what people don't know is that in order for a pump to detect or in order for the controller to detect that the power is coming from a battery and not from the from your regular wall outlet is the voltage drop that's the voltage drop so yes. on the wall outlet you're using you have you have 120 volts and then you use a power supply which brings it down to 24 volts yes. so the controller is is getting 24 volts all the time so a controller is happy as soon as the power is out those 24 volts go down because the battery backup can only give you 12 volts so as soon as that, as soon as the voltage goes down from 24 to 12, that's when the controller knows, hey, I'm on battery mode. I have to make changes here and trigger the thing, you know, and trigger the changes. Right. Now, now with, yeah, with a, a UPS though, you're looking at straight 24 volts. So there's exactly. no there's no detection then. It's so what happens? Yeah. So what what happens when the when the power goes out on a UPS, Dave? Yeah, so essentially, you know, that pump, whatever the settings are ha that you have it set in, it's pulling that much from the UPS. So you, you know, you could essentially uh, drain a, a UPS very fast. Yeah, because there is no there is no voltage drop. The UPS provides, even though it's running battery, it's still providing 24 volts out. Yep. Um, uh, and then, so the controller doesn't see the difference. The controller can't tell the difference between 24 volts from the battery and 24 volts from the wall because it's still 24 volts. You got to remember, the UPS were not designed for this. The, the UPS were designed to for computers, and the computer has to have the 24 volts in order to keep going. You know, so that you have enough time to save it. If the power, if the UPS were to drop to 12 volts, the computer would automatically shut off because 12 volts is not enough. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what happens. Now, you know, Dave, question for you, um, which is something that I get on support port on the support portal all the time, and it's like, I connected my pump to the UP to the to the backup battery, yep. and I lost power or I disconnected the power to fake a power outage, and my pump didn't slow down. Right. Why is that? Well, you may not have a controller that has this low power indication or mode um all the hydros uh devices or wave engine 
has this ability to sense this voltage drop, which then you can configure your through your app uh, a low power mode, which will then sense the voltage drop and put those pumps into a slower um, speed, which then instead of maybe pulling uh, uh, 20 watts, now your pumps pulling five watts. So yep. this in turn gives you a much longer extended uh, life through the battery. Correct, correct. So now, but you gotta remember guys, the battery is just that. It's just a battery. It is just something that provides. It is up to the controller. It is up to your pump's controller to know when that voltage is dropped. Now, if the manufacturer of the controller, if the manufacturer of your pump was, was, uh, you know, took that foresight and said, okay, we're going to do that, then they may, they probably programmed it so that if the voltage drops, it puts the pump into an automatic low speed. Reef Octopus Octopoles do that. The Max Spec Gyres do that as well. And so does the Wave Engine. But also there are pumps out there where the controller, even though it's running 12 volts, the manufacturer didn't program, didn't make the controller capable of detecting the, the drop in voltage. So at that point, the controller will continue to run as it was before and run the pump at 100% and drain that battery much faster than it should. So you got to remember, anytime you purchase a pump out there, make sure that the controller was is compatible with a backup battery because it's not the battery's job to know to slow down the pump. It's the controller's job to slow down the pump. The battery has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Okay? All right. So... Um, um, how long does a battery last? That's another question that I get all the time, yeah. all the time, all and, the time. And the answer to that one is it just depends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did. I, I you know, I, I'm going to say this. I had one customer that 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 just did not like me answering. It depends. And unfortunately, <laughs> in this world, you know, a big percentage of 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 answers are. It depends, you know, <laughs> you know, so, so yeah, no, uh, don't get mad if we say it depends because it really, it depends, Yeah. you know. And, so, and what does that depend on? You know, okay. that depends on the load that you're putting on the battery. Exactly. Uh -huh. So most batteries out there are rated by capacity and it's called amp hours. Okay. So the lower the number, the less, let's, let's, you know, I don't want to make the comparison, but the, 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 in terms of capacity, the, the greater the capacity, the greater the amp power number. The lower the capacity, the lower the amp power number. So what amp powers means is that um, uh, if, if you had something drawing one amp constantly, then that's how long it would take to drain that battery. So if you have a battery that is, that, that is a capacity of 2.5 hours, that means that if I have something that is drawing one amp, then this battery is going to be able to keep that something drawing one amp alive for for 2.5 hours. After that, it'll die. Yep. And that's what technically what it means. So as you can see, as you can tell, the higher the the, 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 the capacity, the longer you're going to be able to do that. I mean, obviously, 2.5 hours, one amp is going to keep you, it's going to get 2.5 amp per hour. One amp is two, two and a half hours. But if you have a battery that is 20 amp hours, that that same device running at one amp would be able to stay alive for 20 hours. So you see the relation in there. So obviously I had, the reason why I, when I lost power, I put my Reef Octopus Pulse on the battery is because out of all the pumps that I have, the Reef Octopus Pulse are the ones that draw the least, the least amount of power and give me the most flow. Yeah. Therefore, they're the most efficient pumps that I have. I, because at that point I need low I, I need low power consumption, high flow. That's what I want. So my actually my little octopus four was drawing about five to six watts, and that meant that I was actually going to have the pump running for about two uh, is about two and a half hours I think. That's what the math. That. So if you uh, were, yeah five hours five, five hours five hours five hours about five, five hours. Five hours yep. Yeah five hours, yep. you know, I was running. Now you could easily, you could easily say, okay, you know what? Uh, I wanted to run four pumps on it. Now, 
just like anything else. The more pumps you run, the more power you're pulling out of the battery and the quicker you're going to run out of the battery. So if I were to grab those same, uh, you know, that same Octopulse 4 and instead of running just one, I decide I want to run all four of the pumps, then I would turn that battery into just about an hour. So you see where you can, you, where you should actually um, um, make that decision yourself. I mean, if you live in an area like Chicago, where you know, if I lose power, it's usually about an hour, an hour and a half when it happens, which happens once in a blue moon, at least where I live. Um, um, then you know, I could have gotten away with with two of those pumps, and I would have been fine. But Dave, you're in you're in New Orleans area. If you, sometimes when you lose power, it's for hours. Oh, so yeah. at that at that point, it's like you cannot afford. To, to run four pumps, all you can do is run one. I think really the best thing to think about when you get into to losing power is it's just something to maintain oxygen mm -hmm. for your animals while you evaluate, well, I'm in a storm or I know it's gonna be an extended outage. Now maybe I need to look at my generator um, or, or acquiring a generator to get on some extended um, you know, life, lifetime exactly. uh, for your aquarium. But, you know, typically a lot of the power outages and surges, they're, they're only going to be an hour or two hours. But I've seen a lot of times, you know, 20, 30 minutes, fish are already gasping for air without any, any oxygen. And uh, yeah. so really these battery backups are a great investment, you know, to especially after what we saw this year uh, with the in cold Texas. In, the, in Texas and and in the South. Um, a lot of people just don't, never invested in anything like this. They never had to or thought they had to. And unfortunately, it, it was very costly. Yes, it was. I mean, it, it, I feel for the, I feel for those those folks out there that had the, the problems with the, the battery. Problem, I mean, problem from it. Yep. you know, and unfortunately at that point when you've had that long of a power outage in such a cold condition, like I said at the beginning of the show, then you start, the longer the outage goes, the more variables come into play because, yeah. you know, the shorter, you know, when you have a short outage, all you got to do is worry about flow because the the thermal ex the thermal exchange between water and the ambient is not, is, is, is not long enough to drop the water. The, the level of the, the temperature of the water. But as you get longer, then that temperature variable starts to become even more and more and more of an issue and unfortunately these batteries are not meant to drive a heater they just can't nice. yep. you know so okay so dave which brings me to a great question should i be using all my pumps and should i use my return pump to keep the flow going i mean i'm thinking you know if i could keep my return pump going that would actually be better or not you know no, i get the question all the time I, you know, considering your return pumps typically going to draw a lot more power, I, I recommend really just using a, one of your flow pumps and they're going to draw a lot less power and give you a lot more extended battery time. And that's really where you're going to, you really want to try and, and push that pump to direct it toward the surface to get some, some uh, oxygen exchange, some surface agitation across the top. And, uh, that that's going to be your your best bet in terms of longevity for the battery and for your animals. Yes. Yeah. And let us let let us make it clear. I mean, when Dave and I say that, that's because you're using this small battery. Obviously, if you're using a power generator, you you look at your power generator ratings and then you go from there. So you might be able to do it. You might not be able to do it. it depends on what you do. But if you live in the city or you know an apartment building or something, and all you can do is this small battery, it's 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 not about whipping the corals. It's not about making the corals happy. At that point, it's about keeping things alive. Yeah. So trust me, the return pump, it's going to eat this battery. I mean, this battery on a return pump that averages like about 20 to 50 watts, this battery will only last you minutes. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. It will yeah. last you minutes, but if you hook up a control, an Octopulse 4, it'll last you about five hours. Yeah. See the difference? Differences there. One thing, so, uh, Carlos, I think a lot of people were like, well, I don't know how much uh, wattage, or, you know, in order to make a, a calculation. How do I know how much power or wattage my pumps pulling at what speed? Well, the wave engine can tell you. 
So you can look at your app and say, oh, look, at, at 50%, uh, the, the gyre is pulling uh, 16 watts. Yes. So it gives you a, a window of like, okay, well, now I know where I maybe to set up my low power mode. And that's Correct. maybe something we can talk about when we Correct. get into the hydros. Yeah, so I want to say hello to Sean Beaver. Uh, Rajendra is here. I know that there were a couple of people from in Europe that came in. Greg Carroll is good to see him again. Um, so thank you so much, Harkins Aquatics, to hear it. This is so great to see everybody. We are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. This is Coral View Workshops for Hydros and other products. So if you like the show, if you like what you're hearing, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell button, and you'll be notified right away whenever the show goes there. You know, and, and we have some good crowds. There's always people asking some great questions. Also, for Hydro's devices, if you have any questions, please join us at our forum, forum.coralviewhydros.com. A lot of the questions that you're asking already have been answered there. Yes, we also have a Facebook group, but trust me, searching on Facebook is really not intuitive. I'm not going to say hard. It's just not intuitive. So it's a hell of a lot easier to search on a forum than to search on Facebook. So that's it. I'm not saying don't go to Facebook, but it's going to be much easier to go to the forum than at Facebook. All right. So Dave, when we come back, we're going to talk about the hydros and how to connect the battery to, yeah. the, to, to the wave engine to the battery. But before that, let's hear from our sponsor. Welcome back, right. everybody. After that uh, Academy Award winning, Emmy winning <laughs> commercial, <laughs> April, you're that's getting awesome. good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's a highlight of the video. I got eh? seeing that video, man, with all that wind. <laughs> I was, uh, you know what scares me, Dave, is that we're going to turn like the Super Bowl where people are just going to watch us to see the commercial and not us. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. Welcome to CoralView CV TV. Today we're talking about backup batteries and what you should do in term in when you lose your power. My name is Carlos with my co-host Dave Dakin, owner of CoralView. We want to welcome everybody. So Dave, on this new uh, segment right here, we're going to talk about the Wave Engine and how the Wave Engine is compatible with the backup battery. And it is, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the wave engine, it's like it was programmed so that when you have that voltage drop that we talked about before from, from 24 down to, down, down to 12, it is going to detect that and switch over to a low power mode. But what the wave engine does that does it so well is that it actually allows you to specify which pump or pumps and at what speed you're going to run those pumps. And the reason why is because we all have different tanks. Dave, you have a 400 and plus gallon tank out there. I have a 200 gallon tank here. So to move water in your tank, your pumps or your pump is going to have to run at a little higher speed than yep. mine. And the same thing, if I had a 20 gallon tank or you know a little fresh water tank, the last thing I want to do is put that, put that pump at 30% and splash everything because even 30% is too low. So the wave engine allows you to customize the low power mode and the low power speed based on your tank, which is what is awesome. Now we do sell a kit 
that allows you to connect this backup battery to the wave engine and it's right there there's the entire process now the kit this is not the kit this is actually the components that you need thank you april um uh, if i can have picture number four Okay, there you go. So that's the kit. And the kit is two cables. It's uh, two cables that you need in order to be able to put the wave engine in, be I'm sorry, to put the battery back up between the wave engine's power supply and the wave engine itself. Now, let's go to the next picture, which is number five, uh, April, and that one shows you the components. All right, so the kit is the two cables in the middle, the backup battery is the blue box with the power supply and then you have the wave engine that comes with its own power supply as well and the way you connect them is actually quite simple if we can go to picture number seven and that's it so technically what you're doing is you the the, the backup battery has um, um it's labeled quite nicely and it has three connectors in there the top connector is the input or charger and that is the backup the backup battery charger that's the trickle charger that will keep the battery charging when the powder when the when the power is on now the second input is going to be the pump power supply they're labeled that means the power supply from the wave engine and then the output is the pump also that goes to the wave engine that's how simple you connect them once you connect them all then you have uh, a wave engine that is running on regular power. And as soon as you lose the power, it'll switch over to a backup battery. So one thing that we haven't talked about is that, you know, with the wave engine also is that you have a pump, the, the, the I'm sorry, the battery is only 2.5 amp hours, but you can actually multiply that if you wanted to make it bigger. So you can easily just daisy chain the, the, the batteries. So you have two batteries, and now all of a sudden now you have something that will run will run twice as much so that that reef octopus 4 pump that ran for 5 hours now it's going to be able to run for 10 hours instead of two, instead of 5 so that's how you do it yep. all right also I want to say that the we're going to be talking about the wave engine but the ice cap controller can also do the same thing so oh. the ice cap controller plugs to the to the backup battery exactly the same way and I'm going to ask uh, April to show picture number 13 all right, so you can see picture number 13 right now, just, and then you can see how the ISCAP battery is there. Now, with the ISCAP battery, it doesn't have those GX12 connectors, so you do not need the Hydros kit for that. Actually, you just need the regular battery, and it'll connect natively. On the Wave Engine, you need the kit. On the ISCAP, you don't. All right, so one thing I'm going to say, and I think I said at the beginning of the, of the call, is that don't forget, it is always recommended to also put your internet router and modem on a backup battery. And you know, and you can go to Amazon and buy a UPS, a UPS backup battery. It'll cost you like 40 to 50 bucks. And then it'll give you peace of mind. Because what happens, what happens when everybody loses power? You just sit in a chair. You know, if it's cold outside, if it's raining, you know what, if it's nice outside, you just go outside and, and do what you do. You know, if it's if it's daylight, you can do some cleaning. But if it's the middle of the night, yep. all you do is sit in a chair and look at your phone. And the last thing and you're not going to have you're not have you're not having Internet. So, you know, why not just put a backup UPS on that router and modem. And even if you lose power, your Internet will still be up and running and you'll get the fast beats, you know, so. Yep. It, it's always recommended. Also, for hydros, it is recommended because when you keep that internet up, that means you can actually connect to the hydros, you can make changes to the hydros, you can monitor your hydros without any problems. That's that's how easy it is. So it's all it pays off. Those forty dollars, forty fifty dollars from the UPS that you on Amazon or your local store, they pay off pretty quickly. All right. So how do I program the battery? And that's the simplest thing. It doesn't take that long. So I'm going to ask uh, April to switch me over to my Hydro's screen right here. And I'm going to show you. So I've created this wave engine that I have four pumps. I have two Octopulse four pumps. And I have two XF350 max spec gyres. And they're running on a simple sine wave. You know, I think it's 30 seconds I have it go from, from zero to, or the lowest, which is 25% to 100%, that's it. So to create a battery mode, what I'm gonna do is, there's a couple things that we need to do. First of all, when you do a low power, you have to, first of all, you have to create a schedule. Because again, it's 
it's letting you customize everything, which means that you tell it what speed to run, you tell it what pumps to run. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the left-hand side and I'm gonna go to schedules and I'm gonna create a new schedule called low power, okay? And hit create. Now I'm gonna create a pattern. Okay, I usually recommend on a backup battery, low power mode, use constant speed. You don't want the battery going up, the pump going up and down, up and down, because that just create, that uses more power. Probably running at, this, at a stable speed, constant would be easier. So the next thing I'm gonna do is constant speed. I'm gonna make it like, you know what? I'm gonna make it 45% here. Pump count. I could easily select all four pumps that I have, but technically I want the wave engine to be able to run this pump as long as possible. As we talked about before on the first segment of this workshop, you know, it's about moving water. It's not about making the corals happy or it's not about, you know, nutrient export. At this point is about keeping water from getting stagnant and keeping the oxygen levels moving around. So I'm just gonna do one pump. Out of the two pumps, Octopulse 4 and XF350, I just going to go with the Octopulse 4 because it uses less power and it gives you, it's a more efficient pump, it uses less power and gives you more flow. Same end or opposite end, it doesn't matter because you're doing constant speed. Okay, and that's it. I'm going to leave it at zero start time, zero end time, and I'm just going to go ahead and upload my changes. Okay, I'm going to wait for the changes to upload in here. Already done. So I've created a low power mode. My next step is to create a low power mode. So I'm going to go to modes and I'm going to create a new power, a new mode called low power. What, the, what happens is the wave engine, as soon as the wave engine detects the drop in voltage, then it switches to whatever mode low power mode is defined as. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to create a new power, low power mode. All right. I'm gonna mode timeout, I'm gonna make it zero. Okay, so I'm gonna click okay and make it zero. And now look at this, I have my schedules. I got day, night, hurricane, and low power. Now in low power mode, I don't want my day, night, hurricane schedules. I don't want that. I just want the single schedule that I created that runs a single pump at a certain speed constantly. So that's my low power mode. I'm gonna go ahead and upload the changes. And the last thing you got to do is a three-step process. The last thing you got to do is you got to tell the wave engine which one of this of the modes right here, of the four modes, is your low power mode. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to options, scroll down, and it says low power mode. I'm going to make it here. And then exit delay, I'm going to make it 30 seconds. And why do I need exit delay of 30 seconds? You don't need it. You can leave it zero. But in my experience over the years, I know that when power comes back, sometimes it comes back for a split second and then it goes out and then it comes back again, you know? Or sometimes it comes back up and then comes back down, it goes back down and then you're out of power. The last thing I wanna do is for the pumps to get this burst of, uh, of power and something happened to them or get stuck. So what I'm gonna do is as soon as the wave engine detects the, the, the voltage from 12 goes up to 24, it knows that it's no longer in battery mode. At that point, wait 30 seconds before you turn everything on and go back to regular mode. So I'm gonna leave it as 30 seconds and I'm gonna go ahead and upload my changes. So now we have a wave engine. I'm gonna go back to my status. My, we have a wave engine that is already set to run at low power mode. Pretty, pretty straightforward if you if you if you think about it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and fake a power outage, and I have it plugged into my backup battery. Here's the wave engine, and I'm, I'm going to do in order to fake a power outage. All I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the power supply from the wall of the battery. That is the same thing as not detecting anything. So, in, so the backup. So right now the wave engine is is connected to the battery, which is connected to the power supply, and the power supply is providing the 24 volts. As soon as I unplug the power supply, the 24 volts will be will be gone, and all that will do is the back battery will automatically kick in and send 12 volts to the um, um to the hydro's wave engine. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Let's see. I'm plugging the power supply. Plug it off. There you go. You can see right here. You see how quickly that was? Low power, 
And look at that, my Octopulse is running at 59% while my other three pumps are completely off. They're completely off. That's it. And if you look at the wave engine, I'm gonna raise the wave engine right here so that, you know, and I'm gonna ask April to show the wave engine again. Look at this, right there. The wave engine is giving me a little flash right here and it's green. It goes green as the backup battery is draining, it'll switch to yellow and then it'll switch to a different color once the batter once the battery is almost drained. So that's what it is. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask April to go back and share my screen. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the power supply again. Let's say the power comes back on. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug the power supply. Okay, as you can see, the power supply is back on. And at that point, look at the wave engine. Look at the status right here. Power's back on, but it's still now is doing my 30 second delay before everything goes back to normal. So as time goes by, what happens right now is even though the even though the power has come back at home, the wave engine is saying, wait a minute, I wanna make sure that the power is back for sure, and then I'll let everything come back on. So as you can see right now, hit zero, and look, the mode went back to normal, and all the pumps went back to regular, you know, resumed their regular schedule. And that's pretty much how a backup battery works on a wave engine. It works on the pumps that are connected directly to the wave engine. It doesn't work on pumps that are at zero to 10 volt because they have their own power supply. And it doesn't work on the Equitec because they have it has its own power supply. But anything connected to the yellow ports on the wave engine will take advantage of this. So now you've customized it. And the beauty about it is that even if you, as you could see on the app, I was still able to look at the wave engine through the app, through Wi-Fi, you know, because the Wi-Fi was still on. So not only does the battery keep the pumps running, the battery also powers the wave engine's brain to keep it running and connected to the cloud. So you can see, so you can see what's going on. And not only that, if we if I were to connect another device through the CAN bus you know, where the wave engine is powering the other devices as well, the backup battery will also keep those other devices powered up. And the wave engine and the hydros devices use minimal power. It's going to reduce the amount, the, the running time, but it's gonna be minute. It's gonna be minute. So that's pretty much how the, um, um, how the wave engine um, runs on a backup battery. Pretty simple. Yep. Yeah, I'd that's like it. to say too, Carlos, we. You know, some people kind of leaning in, questioning uh, the wave engine. And on our next uh, live feed, we'll, we're going to talk more about the wave engine again. And it's been a while since it's been out. But I think, uh, you know, just more people, you know, gravitating toward what we're doing with hydros. They want to learn a little more about what exactly is the, the wave engine. That is, it's really totally separate than a, the control two or four. Yes. Uh, kind of give a rundown of all the features and what it's actually capable of doing. It is yes, a, yes. it's a wave, it's a, it's a pump generator. Um, yes. It's not a, an individual actual part of the control four or two, but it is a, a controller in itself on its yes, own. Yes. So we will talk mm -hmm. uh, about that and, and, uh, you know, so, let people yeah, so um, um, so I want to say hello, uh, say hello to Raven. He's uh, he's in the UK. Paddle Aqu Puddle Aquatics is here. Jeff Bernadette is here, um, um, and uh, Alex is also here. So thank you again. You're watching CVTV Workshops live on Facebook and YouTube. If you like the show, if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, or hit the bell button. You know, at the end of the day. Dave wants to see people watching the show. If people are not watching, then he's not going to do the shows. You know, I'm well, going to do it by myself. <laughs> and we know, too, the show lives on. You know, we do this. We know people can go back. And and, and it's a good library, I think, Carlos. Yeah, absolutely. If you buy something of Hydros and you want to learn how to set it up, the videos live on. And, and it's a resource to, to go back to. 
Exactly, wow. exactly. Wow. So if you have any questions about the uh, hydros, the wave engine, or something like that, just please, you can always go to our hydros, Coral View Hydros forum at forum.coralviewhydros.com. Also, you can visit us at coralviewhydros.com. And if you go to coralviewhydros.com, get started, you'll be able to download, I mean, you're not download, but you'll be able to see an online instructions manual on the wave engine on the control on the ice cap so you'll be able to walk you through the entire process so you know so yeah that you know it's it's it was a quick show i think it's uh, i yeah. think it's one of the quickest shows we've ever done i know it's this isn't the most technical of show that we've done but i think it it could very well be one of the most important in terms of you know we got such a a, a huge investment in our aquariums and to think something as, as stupid as a, a power outage um, mm -hmm. really just take it out and uh, I, I really exactly. think for, for the money this is a, a great investment and so you know that exactly and it doesn't matter how big the the tank is yeah, it, doesn't, it matter. doesn't matter it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Yeah. you could have you could have a 200 gallon tank which this one will keep running for about five hours on an octopus four or a 400 gallon tank or I could have a 20 gallon freshwater tank you know what I just plug this to an air stone or to a small pump inside the tank yeah. and it'll keep that little pump running it doesn't yeah. matter stagnant water I mean I've lost fish sitting in a bucket of water you know, um, uh, where the water is not moving. It, it's stupid things that I've done, but that's that's what it is. So the difference between a bucket and a glass tank, there's no difference because the water is not moving. So m water movement is key. Yeah. All right. So I want to say thank you for everybody for watching the show. You know, we do this every couple of weeks. We are live on Facebook and YouTube. I want to say thank you to Scott. I want to say thank you to, uh, oh, Chris is here now. I want to say thank you to Ryan. I want to say thank you to Wendy. I want to say thank you to Jeff, um, Mark Kinnery, David Paulson are here. Thank you everybody for watching. I want to also say thank you to April, our producer. She does a fantastic job. Jeremy, our graphic designer, always giving us the, the best graphics in here. And Dave, thank you for being a co-host. Yeah, always fun. Yeah, I love it. So I'm glad to do it. And we'll keep on uh, sharing information. Yeah. All right. So see you guys next time. Thank you. Thank you.